IELTS writing academic test task one change over time task in today's task we're going to be looking at a task that has multiple time periods last time I covered the static or single time period tasks today we're going to be looking at times at tasks with multiple time periods I'm Mike Watty I've been an IELTS examiner in Taipei and Adelaide I've also written books on IELTS including the writing test and I currently have a website IELTSanswers.com where I am constantly assessing my students writing every day all in all I've assessed over 10,000 tasks for the real IELTS writing test and also for my students I think this gives me a lot of perspective and insight into the kind of problems that students have with their writing and ways to overcome them. And I hope that I can help you to increase your score in the IELTS writing test. I've identified four main kinds of tasks that you need to be prepared for in the IELTS writing test. These are single time period, multiple time period tasks, process diagrams and maps. I'm making videos for all of these and also I'm going to make a video for a few task types that don't fit neatly into those first four. Today we're going to focus on the change over time tasks or the multiple time period tasks. This means that there's more than one time period. I'm going to be teaching you how you can identify a change over time task so that you know what it is and also how to write it. I'm going to teach you how to make an effective plan, how to structure your task, and then I'm going to present you with a model answer that I wrote. I'm going to break it down so that you can understand how I've written it. And then finally, we'll end with a homework task that some of you keen students out there might like to try. Just to let you know, I have a writing correction service. If you'd like to know details about that, I'll put them in the description of the video. Basically, you send me a task. I will go through it, correct any of the mistakes, and then I'm going to give you a score for each of the four grading criteria along with suggestions about how you can increase your score and make sure you get the score you need. So let's take a look at today's sample task. You might have seen this before. It's from the Cambridge Books of Past test papers. It's about tourists visiting a Caribbean island. Let's start off with our plan and when we're planning a task, we should be thinking about three main things. What's the overall summary? How am I going to divide my data into paragraphs to make it more meaningful to the reader? And then we want to kind of zoom out a bit and look at how much data there is and how we're going to cover the data. Now, oftentimes with change over time, especially the line graphs, there can be a lot of data. We're essentially looking to describe about 10 to 12 features of the data. With this task, we've got three lines and eight time periods. So this means we actually have 24 pieces of data. You cannot cover 24 pieces of data and finish your task on time you only have about 20 minutes right so since there's a lot of data we kind of have to zoom out a bit and work on the most important pieces of data so with my overall summary I'm going to be mentioning that all three lines are increasing I'm going to separate my data according to the line so I'm going to have three body paragraphs one for each line and I'm going to cover them in the <clears throat> order that they start off the sort of highest middle and lowest at the start of the period now I have to select my data 
Carefully, we want 10 to 12 pieces of data. I've got three lines. That means I want to have about three to four things to say about each line. With these line graphs, the start numbers and the end numbers are always important. Imagine it's your bank account. Imagine you had a line graph of your bank account. Some of the most important things would be how much money did you start with? How much money did you end with? And it's the same with these tourists. How many were there at the beginning? How many were there at the end? These are highly important numbers. So we're going to be including those, but we also want to look for some kind of um, important middle numbers. And, and so l let me just run you through the plan that I have for this essay. So if we start with the total, I'm going to mention the starting figure. I'm going to mention this plateau here, which is where the line flattens out or levels off. And then I'm going to mention the steep rise towards the end and the end figure. Then with the second line, the visitors staying on the island, I'm going to mention the start number, the plateau in this middle period here, and this fluctuation that occurs at the end. Then for the last paragraph, I'm going to mention the start number, the fluctuation over the first couple of years, and then this rise, and how it overtakes the figure for those staying on the island. This is a highlight. This is really important. Where one line crosses over another, it's an important highlight to communicate to the reader. This is important for getting to higher bands, especially band seven and beyond. Then I'm going to mention the end number. In terms of the structure, I'm going to have an introduction, including the overall summary. I'm then going to have a body paragraph for each line of the report. Let's start with the introduction. I need to do two things in my introduction. First, I want to paraphrase the title that I've been given. Then I want to cover the overall summary for the report. And I do this in the initial paragraph because it's the most important sentence of the report. I want to make sure I don't forget to write it. I want to make sure I don't run out of time to write it. And I also like to do this because you can form one solid paragraph instead of two tiny little ones. Now, when it comes to paraphrasing the title, there's three main things we can do. We can look to rephrase keywords. We can look to change word forms, such as nouns to verbs, verbs to nouns, and we can look to shift words around in our sentence to change the word order. Let's take a look. The line graph illustrates visits to an island in the Caribbean by holidaymakers from 2010 to 2017. So I've paraphrased graph to line graph, so that's more specific, right? And it is a line graph. Make sure you know the names of line graphs, bar graphs, pie charts. Learn the names of the common tasks that you see in the in the re regularly in the test. They typically give you words like the graph below shows or the chart below shows. So you can paraphrase by being more specific. Then shows you can write illustrates. Visit visiting I've changed the word form to visits. The the word tourists has been paraphrased and moved later in the sentence. So that's just to illustrate how we can change our word order. I, I suppose to another sort of fourth idea about paraphrasing that I've just kind of thought about, sometimes we can leave out words. So I've left out the word particular. We don't really need to, I, I could change that to specific, but what's it communicating? It's not really communicating everything, it's anything. It's just about an island in the Caribbean. Whether I use the word particular or specific doesn't really 
change any communication. So that's a fourth way you can paraphrase just by leaving out words. And then my overall summary. Now the overall summary is I want to write uh, one or possibly two sentences to give the most important information to the reader. Um, it, it should be general in nature. That it shouldn't be specific. I shouldn't be mentioning particular years or data levels. That's for the body of the report. So what I've written, overall the total visitors increased and this trend was mirrored by both the number of visitors staying on the island and on cruise liners. And, and, and for the word mirrored, just think of a mirror. It's just like sort of like uh, one thing looking like another thing that's to mirror it. So I think that's a pretty effective overall summary. Um, you, you could write something different. You could write that, if you wanted, you could highlight that the um, visitors on cruise ships increased more dramatically than those staying on an island. And that, that would be kind of a nice thing to communicate as well. However, that information can also come out in the body of the report. Then it's time to move on to the first body paragraph. And I want to start my body paragraphs with topic phrases. The purpose of the topic phrase is to tell the reader what the paragraph is about and perhaps to suggest how the whole report is structured, how the data is organized, which in this case is by the lines, by the three lines in the chart. So let's look at our first body paragraph that deals with the total visits and notice how I start this paragraph with that phrase. Total visits, so now the reader knows the paragraphs about total visits. Total visits started at 1 million in 2010 and then increased throughout the period except for a brief plateau at about 2.7 million throughout 2015. A sharp increase in the final year saw visitors rise to 3.5 million. Now, notice something here, the sharp increase. So one of the things they say about um, non-native English speakers is that they don't use a lot of adverbs and adjectives. So one of the things you should be trying to do in improving your English is using more adverbs and adjectives. And when it comes to task one, this really lends itself towards this. I not only mentioned an increase, I said a sharp increase. And this helps our task achievement because it's more specific. There's a difference between an increase and a sharp increase, right? A sharp increase means it's a more dramatic increase over a short period of time. So it helps our score for task achievement and it helps our score for lexical resource as well. So I, I really encourage you to be modifying your verbs with adverbs and your nouns with adjectives. The next body paragraph is about the tourists staying on the island and note again how I signal this to the reader. This is good writing, right? This increases your score for cohesion and coherence. The easier you make it for the reader, the higher your score goes up. So we've got tourists staying on the island were about 750,000 in 2010. Then during the next three years, this doubled. The number plateaued from 2013 to 2015 at 1.5 million and then fluctuated at this level over the final two years. Next body paragraph, vacationers on cruise liners started at 250,000 and fluctuated at this level for two years. Then the number rose continually to approximately 1.3 million by 2015, which surpassed those staying on the island. By 2017, it reached 2 million. 
Now, when it comes to vocabulary for change over time tasks, it's really, really important that you build up language for describing trends. And we can have noun phrases and verb phrases for doing this. You also want to show an ability to paraphrase to the examiner. So you want to have different ways of describing the same things. So you can see if we're using noun phrases, I can talk about an increase or a rise. Um, I can also use some idiomatic language. Now, idiomatic language is always helpful for your score for lexical resource as long as it's, as it's used appropriately. Now, when it comes to writing, a lot of idiomatic expressions are informal and it's difficult to use it in the essays. However, there's lots of useful idiomatic expressions for trends and you can see a few ideas here. A jump, a, a leap, right? So we're, it's an idiomatic expression because we're not really jumping or leaping. Uh, these are ways of talking about a big increase. And we've also got some for talking about decreases such as a tumble, a plunge. But by the way, what I'm showing you on my screen at the moment is from my ebook. My writing ebook includes a lot of language for all kinds of task ones. So the third trend we want to look at is what is the one with the flat line. And that's the one that I wrote a plateau in my report. But we've got some other words we can use here. Similar level, steady trend, a period of stability. And then we come on to the last one, a fluctuation, where things are going up and down, an oscillation. I don't know I'd really write oscillation. You, you, you could, though. It's, it's possible to write that. It has the same meaning as fluctuation. I'd just say that it's a little less natural. And then we can have our verb phrases. And again, we've got some great idiomatic expressions in here like soared, rocketed, or for a decrease, plunged, tanked, and then our flat trend, stabilized, and our fluctuation as a verb phrase becomes fluctuated. That, I was talking about modifying these phrases, so here's a few examples. A slight increase, increased dramatically, uh, decreased slightly, a dramatic decrease. So note what I was saying, we can get more precision by modifying our nouns and verbs so that we can see a difference between a slight increase and increased dramatically. We also want some language to describe specific data levels. The first one that I'm showing you on the screen is the peak. And think of that as like a mountain. We talk about the peak of a mountain. And so we can use this same expression when describing data. Uh, we can talk about the low point um, we also have a phrase, a nadir. Uh, nadir, it's not very common. So in theory, it could be beneficial for your score. But again, again it's not something I see commonly. Uh, there's a slight risk your examiners never heard of this word. Or maybe they feel it's unnatural. But it is a great word, and some of you might like to use it. And we need to describe when one line overtakes another. And we've got a couple of phrases. The verb phrase was overtaken by. And th that can also be expressed just as overtook. So it would be like um, visitors on the island overtook those staying on ships. A actually, I think it was really the other way around. Or those staying on, or the, the number staying on ships was overtaken by the numbers, number staying on the island. You're also going to have to describe a lot of numbers and percentages. And a couple of rules here. With countable things, we can mention the number, the number of trees planted increased by 15%. But if we have uncountable 
really we should say nouns, something like water, we have to change the word to amount. The amount of water used increased by 15 litres. Percentages we can paraphrase to proportion. You're also going to need to build up ways of describing time and get prepositions for time periods used appropriately. Turning to grammar, we want to vary our sentence structure. This will help avoid having repetitive sentence structures and it'll show some talent to the examiner. We can use noun phrases and when you're using noun phrases, modify your nouns with adjectives. The adjectives come before the nouns. There was a dramatic rise in the amount of water. There was a slight increase in the number of unemployed people. Then we can use verb phrases. And in this case, we can modify our verbs with adverbs. The order should be verb followed by adverb, right? The reverse of the noun phrases. We had adjective noun. Now we've got verb adverb. The amount of water rose dramatically. The number of unemployed people increased slightly. You should learn how to write both these types of sentences. Another way to vary your sentences are to move keywords around. You can see the way Turkey moves around in the sentence to change the word order. We've got Turkey spent the most at 32.14%. The nation that spent the highest share was Turkey at 32.14%. About 32% was spent in Turkey. So moving the word Turkey around in the sentence creates different sentence patterns and this is valuable for your score for grammar. Another way to increase your score is to use a relative pronoun. You can see this on your screen now with the word which. Then the number rose continually to approximately 1.3 million by 2015, which surpassed those staying on the island. So the which surpassed those staying on the island, that's an independent, sorry, that's a dependent clause. It helps form the complex sentence which has a independent and independent an independent and a dependent clause in it. I would strongly recommend that you complete the homework task for this video. By doing the homework task you can check your understanding that you know how to structure this task, that you know how to write the introduction and, and the overall summary and also give you the opportunity to practice using verb and noun phrases to describe trends. If you would like me to assess your task, you might like to look in the description below this video. I have a link to my IELTS Writing Correction Service. I get you to email me in your tasks and then I read them, correct them, give you a score for each of the four grading criteria and also suggestions about how you can increase your score. I think that's the most important part, right? And, and this can help make sure you can get the score you need when you take your test and also just find out if you're making some kind of mistakes that could be pushing down your score. I typically hear from students that they're stuck on a certain score. Maybe it's uh, 6.5 and they need 7. And oftentimes I can have a look at someone's writing and find things that are actually holding the student back and preventing them from getting to a band 7. You might also be interested in my ebook. I'm including a link to that. And also, you might like to go to my website. I've got lots of model answers for Task 1 Academic, and you might benefit by reading those. By reading those tasks, it can help increase your understanding about the structure of these tasks and also the kind of language 
that you can use in your tasks. So I, I, I strongly encourage you to be reading model answers. Make sure you subscribe to me so that you will get notifications of when I release videos. This is the second one in a series. This one is change over time. I'm making another four videos that deal with part one academic of your test. I've already released videos about the six kinds of essays that you need to be prepared to write. Best of luck with your preparation.